we've had like this proliferation of rollups um, and, and LTs in general. The problem with that is I think like every single chain needs to bring its own liquidity. The idea there being through the ag layer, um, you will now be able to be on chain A and transact on chain B. Um, and really what that kind of means for devs and applications, which is kind of cool, is that you share liquidity. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark, the CEO of Polygon. I'm excited to be here. Nice to meet you, Mark. So, so yeah, um, we're here in East Denver, uh, in Denver this week. And uh, yeah, Polygon, obviously, in 2024, has very big plans. Uh, the egg layer is the, the new meta of this year. Uh, and obviously, the Polygon CDK and, and ZK rollups. And at Gelato, we are obviously deploying Polygon CDK. We offer it if you want to deploy a, a rollup on the Polygon CDK stack, you can do so with Gelato. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to ask you some questions about your plans for this year. So let's let's uh, jump into the first big buzzword here, the egg layer. How would you describe it to crypto people, I guess, uh, here at Denver? What 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 should they expect uh, from, yeah. from Polygon here? I think talking about for a second, like what we're solving is yeah. probably useful, right? And so when you think of it, we've had like this proliferation of rollups um, and, and L2s in general, Polygon CDK being kind of one of them that's really kind of proliferating. Problem with that is we're gonna have a bunch of chains that are standing alone, right? And so, you know, when you do that, you think like every single chain needs to bring its own liquidity, all those pieces that need to come in, and that's really not ideal. And so our thought is like, how do we end up unifying that liquidity? And that's really where the ag layer comes in. Um, the idea there being through the ag layer, um, you will now be able to be on chain A and transact on chain B. Um, and really what that kind of means for devs and applications, which is kind of cool is that you share liquidity, but the other way to think about it is you're also sharing users, right? And so you've got like a user on chain A, um, then really what you actually have is also a user for chain B whenever they want to transact on it. And so that's really kind of what the ag layer ends up bringing. That's uh, really exciting, I think, because I mean, roll-up technology solves a lot, definitely, in terms of scalability. I gave a talk on it yesterday at East Denver, actually, if you want to catch that on YouTube. Uh, about how uh, rollup as a service especially allows to you know provide infinite scale uh, zero gas rollups and so on so it, it solves a lot but there's this one big issue of liquidity fragmentation which to to be fair there are certain uh, certain applications that don't have to worry about this so much if you may be building a standalone game or another like maybe a social app or something probably less of an issue for you but like you said there's more to it you can also like talk about sharing users with other rollups and so on right but, but yeah, it's certainly a big issue for DeFi applications and uh, other general purpose chains maybe that want to bootstrap a, a new ecosystem on, for example, a, a Polygon L3. Uh, so, so yeah, and th this, this is a really thorny issue, liquidity fragmentation. And, and yeah, how do you guys uh, basically, uh, what technology do you employ? What, what's the sort of key innovation that you bring to the table here to, to make that happen? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So we think of it in like three stages right now. I mean, at the core of frankly, everything that we do is ZK tech, right? Now, that being said, we're doing this in a stage approach. So like the first stage, which is already live, is just this unified bridge on Ethereum. Um, basically all it is, is all these chains get to kind of plug into this bridge. And when they want to transact cross chain, they're technically still doing it through Ethereum. It's slow and expensive, but technically you can still do it. Um, when we really think things get more interesting is when the ZK tech comes in, and you start aggregating proofs across these chains, right? So all of these chains are going to be secured by ZK Tech. And so they'll create proofs, and chain A and chain B will create proofs. They get aggregated together. And then chain D and E will create proofs. Everything gets aggregated together, and then they get submitted to Ethereum. When we do that, the cost starts decreasing significantly. And what that means is that instead of submitting to Ethereum you know, every, say, 30 minutes, we can start submitting proofs every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes. So you start getting kind of somewhat of an acceleration in like the cross-chain transactions that you're doing. But ultimately 10, 15 minutes, it just isn't good enough, right? And so kind of step three ends up being where we bring in relayers. And that effectively is going to allow for cross-chain transactions initially in like sub three, maybe five seconds. And then eventually the goal is to get it down to like sub one second on, on those transactions. And that's when you'll get to that feel like you're on a single chain, even though you're actually interacting. At, and at this point, we're talking pure cryptography, no um, third party liquidity provider, middleman, whatever that bring their own security or business models with them. This is like pure ZK tech. All relying purely on ZK tech. That's amazing. Like, I think a lot of people sometimes um, 
have a hard time understanding, okay, um, what is the difference here? Because nowadays I can already use a cross or a saw to go very quickly between roll-ups, right? Yep. Almost instantly. But uh, what, they, what, what, what they often don't know is that a cross itself has a lot of cost and trouble operating their systems because they are beholden to the slow bridges like on optimistic roll-ups seven days, sometimes even, right? So they have to work with that slowness and that's very costly for them and also does, means that they cannot scale to many chains, right? Yep. So um, so this is what ZK Tech is, is really solving. I mean, when it's actually instant, like you described, then it can also, like, then it is also an end user product because end users need instant. But even before that, like going down to 10 minutes instead of seven days for withdrawal times and so on, that will already make the lives of liquidity bridging providers like across Stargate and so on so much easier. Yep. And that will allow these liquidity providers to scale to 100 egg layer rollups and, and, and everywhere else as well, right? So, so I think this is really important to understand that for me, uh, ZK technology is first and foremost in its current stage a B2B solution almost. Like it's, it's really important for, uh, for some of these liquidity um, projects uh, to use uh, that use these ZK bridges. But yeah, of course, as soon as we could get closer to instant, then it's also becoming more and more of an end user product as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good way of looking at it. Like the way that I think about it is so far, we've all, anytime we've wanted to do cross chain stuff, we've done it through bridges and bridges have certain kind of centralized points, points of failure. And the ag layer allows kind of removing bridges. You don't need a bridge anymore. You're actually just doing it through these proof aggregations. And that adds kind of a certain level of security that wouldn't exist otherwise. And I think ultimately when we end up decentralizing this in like a fourth step, um, you're going to be able to do that in a much easier way than what you would be able to do with the bridge where we don't really see too many like decentralized bridges right now. Um, and so that's kind of like one nice thing is just frankly getting rid of the bridges that is not like a good user experience. But then to your point is, yeah, when you start getting like sub second, um, as a user, you're basically just looking at this and you're saying, hey, I, I want to execute this transaction. You don't you literally do not care anymore what chain it's on. It's simply, I want to execute this transaction. And so I think it'll be really nice for users to be able to like get that experience. And that's like very different from like, let's say the Cosmos experience. That's what most people envision. And like, I think we all at Polygon like at least look at Cosmos and are like, okay, it's actually very impressive what they've done over the years. Um, but that experience is still not an ideal experience. It's like go from one chain to another chain to another chain. And like uh, ultimately like IBC is useful in that sense. but the experience is like very confusing as yeah, a user. Is, yeah. um, and the nice thing as a user that we haven't talked about is that when you're using the ag layer, you're actually just going to have the same native asset at all times. There's no more wrapping assets, none of that. It's like that same asset is going to exist across all of these, these chains. Nice. Cool. So I guess uh, we're talking technical. So, so the next question would be, uh, obviously, Polygon started out with the, the ZK EVM, and this was the big thing last year, um, the launch of that, or maybe the year before, I don't know, there was a race at some point. Uh, but now we are seeing type 1 provers, I think it is. Um, so, so what are the plans uh, this year for uh, the ZK EVM version as we know today in the CDK versus the type 1 provers coming on, online? The, the way I understand it, type 1 proving is very desirable because it allows you to have a almost unmodified version of the EVM, like a geth or whatever, yeah. and you don't have to, this huge diff anymore between the geth code base and, and the current ZK EVM, which obviously introduces a lot of cost, like maintaining the code, testing it, auditing it, fixing the bugs. Uh, so type one proof is sort of like, it, it's very efficient in that sense, but we know currently that it's not optimized yet. So the proving itself is much more expensive, even still than, than the, 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 the type two proving is today. So so is that the correct way to think about it? Yeah. And, and like what, what strides are you making there? Like, uh, you, yeah. That is the right way to think about it. It's simply like type one prover, much easier to use, but it is more expensive than the type two prover, which is harder to use and update, but is actually a lot cheaper. Um, now, the nice part is when we ended up finishing the development on the type one prover, the tests that we did ended up resulting in much cheaper transactions than we actually expected. Like we were getting to a point where we're like, okay, how useful is this type one prover going to be? Because yes, it's nice that you can just plug it in to kind of any EVM client, but like, what are you going to do with it when it's that expensive? And then when we saw the cost of these transactions, we're like, oh, this is actually going to be very useful and it's not even fully optimized. Um, and so I think there is a, already a point in time where like this type one prover can be used and is going to be uh, uh, efficient. Um, the question is just, do you need it? Um, you know, everywhere. And I think the answer is like, no, like you, you don't. If you need a, a even cheaper 
um, uh, uh, chain, then you're going to rely on that like type two client, at least for now. Because I think the one thing that like we've all learned across the space is that like the speed at which proving systems are, are improving is like massive, much faster than anyone expected. We even saw this with when we launched CKVM, everyone thought it was going to take another two, three years and we launched it last year. Uh, and now it's the same thing here with proving systems, which is the development speed of these proving systems is incredible. And the optimizations are bringing the cost down very, very low, even for these type one provers, but it's also true for the type two provers. Nice, cool. Um, do, you, do you see a world where everything converges to type one provers or do they still have a, sort of a, a, a reason to exist side by side for, for indefinitely? I think there's going to be a world. Uh, I can't tell you how far in the future, but where the costs are going to be so cheap with a type one prover that you won't need to use a type two prover. Um, there's a certain point rate where that marginal, just additional cost is just so low. Um, this is especially true when you start thinking about like proof aggregation, right? So like right now, when you're submitting every single proof to Ethereum, you're extremely sensitive to the cost of generating a proof. Once you start aggregating the proofs across all of these chains, you get to a point where that 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 cost becomes you know, subsidize so much more that you become less sensitive to it. So I could very much see a world in which we start using type point provers much more heavily. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, last but not least, uh, I mean, it's impressive. Polygon is, is such a big project. Like you have these these teams working on different things. Uh, one of these teams that I recently heard about is is Maiden is sort of uh, resurfacing a bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think you are you like what what should we expect there this year? Uh, this is not zk EVM anymore, right? Like type two, type one is both zk EVM sort of yep. arena. Uh, Maiden is a, a different uh, Stark based thing, maybe comparable to Starknet or something. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, what, what should people expect there? What what are your hopes for for this project and and what market do you want to address with that? Yeah, so Maiden is different in that it has its own VM that is not the the Ethereum VM. It's the Maiden VM. Um, so I think a few things in terms of timing, like it'll go on testnet shortly, and we're hoping to see it on mainnet by the end of this year. It always depends on how, how kind of testnet goes. We're currently working closely with a few projects. We're calling them kind of like the pioneers that are working on building things on, on Maiden. One of like the key differences on Maiden that is just not really how the VM works at all is this concept of like client side proving. So right now, when you submit a transaction on ZKVM, like the proving is being done by another party. What Maiden allows is for you to do your own proving. Um, and what that means is you can technically be on your phone, you could submit a transaction, you could even uh, edit that transaction and ultimately prove that transaction yourself. And so there's a few things that come with that. One, a massive amount of scale because you're doing it all on your own device. Uh, and then second is a certain level of like privacy, or you could think of it as almost like selective disclosure, which is if you're executing transactions on your own phone, well, you could decide what information you share and what information you don't share. We're going to like stage how we approach the, the privacy component, but there's this really cool kind of like different use cases that you could do. The one that I always point to is kind of DEXs and order book DEXs specifically. Um, if you think of like your, your typical chain, if you really wanted to put all, you know, orders on chain. So whether you're, you're kind of opening an order or canceling an order or modifying an order, um, you basically there's nowhere where you can fully put everything on chain. And with Maiden, because you're doing it all on your own device, you can actually do that. So you could have an entire order book DEX that is operating fully on chain on Maiden in a way that you couldn't do it on the EVM. Wow. That's that's quite mind blowing. I would like to double click on that at, at some point, but but yeah. not today. So I think we are coming to the to the end of this uh, short interview. Thanks a lot, uh, everybody uh, online listening to this, uh, and hopefully hopefully you had fun here at ETH Denver. We certainly did. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Thank you.